This video will discuss the basics of Monte Carlo approximations to mathematical quantities. So in general, we have a system of n atoms, as we typically do in computational chemistry. Each of those has an xyz coordinate, as we are fond of mentioning here. So we have three n total coordinates. So our energy, our total energy, our potential energy, that's a function of these three n coordinates. And we mentioned in our ensemble properties video that the average energy, or any average property of our system, which depends on the coordinates, is equal to an integral over all space in all 3n of the coordinates of those dimensions of the energy value at every point in space times the Boltzmann factor of each of those, um, each of those coordinates. So the energy divided by Boltzmann constant times temperature at each value in space. And then in the denominator, that's divided by the integral over all space of the Boltzmann factors, which is just called the partition function from statistical mechanics. Okay, so we also mentioned that this integral, in general, is extremely hard to do. You often have a complicated function up in an exponential, and that's very difficult to compute. So instead, what we want to do is approximate this integral in some way. And one way to do that was our previous discussion of molecular dynamics. Instead of a configuration space Boltzmann weighted average, do a time average over a long period of time. And this is an alternative approach called Monte Carlo, where instead we're going to approx or really, before we even get there, uh, one alternative approach would just be to approximate this integral as a sum over a finite set of points where we sum over some m uh, configurations of the energy of each configuration times Boltzmann factor and then divide by a sum of the Boltzmann factors. So in general, we could choose any set of points here. Uh, you could do a grid integration where you choose basically uh, a set of values in every coordinate. But as we mentioned, that becomes very difficult very quickly because let's say we do 10 points per coordinate and we have uh, 100 atoms, that's 300 coordinates, that's 10 to the 300, that's completely impossible to do. So instead of doing this over some grid, let's just choose a bunch of random points. Let's choose m random points to complete this average and just hope that that approximation is pretty good relative to our exact answer. And, we choose, and at every point, we just choose a random value for each of the coordinates. Now, that might sound insane, and it does seem pretty crazy from the outset at the beginning, but let's take an example problem here and look at a case where it's actually a pretty reasonable thing to do. Let's imagine we have a two-dimensional uh, plane here. We have an x value and a y value. So we have a circle which is inscribed in a square. The area of this square, let's say this x value goes from, say, 0 to 2, y goes from 0 to 2. So the, the length and width of this square is 2, so its area is 4, or whatever this r is, I guess. I've said I've, uh, let's define this as r, the length of this square. So the area of the square is 4r squared, and then, or the radius squared, and then the area of this circle, which is inscribed in it, is pi r squared. So of all the, uh, the ratio of the two areas here, if I, if I randomly choose a point anywhere inside this square, the probability that it's inside the circle is the area of the circle divided by the area of the square. So the area of the circle divided by the area of the square is pi r squared over 4 r squared, or pi over 4. So that's about 0 0.78. There's about a 78% chance that a randomly chosen point in x and y will fall inside this circle uh, of a randomly chosen point inside this square. All right, so this means that the value of pi is approximately four times the probability that our point is inside this circle. So in the limit of a very large number of randomly chosen points, four times the probability that, that the points are inside the circle, so the number of points are the number of points inside the circle divided by the number of points. The limit as that number of points gets very large is going to be equal to the value pi. So 
Once again, this seems pretty crazy because the analytical or the exact result is pretty simple to compute. It's just pi over four. But if we didn't know the value of pi or if pi was some very difficult number to compute, this might actually be a decent way to go. So for example, if I use a thousand points in this simulation, I usually get a few percent error. If I do 10,000 points, I'm usually less than 1% error. And if I do a million points, my approximation usually has a couple digits that are correct. So it is very inefficient. Typically, you need a large number of points. And the problem for doing this in a molecular simulation is the fact that most structures don't contribute very much to the average. Most structures, unless their energy is very low, this Boltzmann factor is going to be almost zero, and they're not going to contribute anything to this sum. So the problem is we need something that pre that preferentially uh, gives us points which are low energy points. So the reason naive Monte Carlo doesn't work too well for molecular simulations is this fact that we want low energy structures. If the energy is much, much greater than KT, then the probability is going to zero. They don't contribute. So what we need is a better algorithm, which is biased towards low energy structures. So that's going to be our next video on Metropolis Monte Carlo, which is an improvement to this Monte Carlo, but takes into the fact that we want our energy to stay fairly low and will give us an, an uh, approximation which is much, much better, and in some cases comparable to or superior to molecular dynamics for simulating these uh, structural properties.